But anyway, I just had to point out some of that so I can get into their claim that Shua means some kind of curse or some kind of crying out because we're saying that it does come from Yah, it's just a passive participle. You just got to do some research and you'll see you can't throw out the letter wall, it's there, it's documented, okay? But the thing that's disturbing is, one, they're being dishonest. They're not telling you about the passive participle of Yasha, which is Yahshua. And two, they're also telling you that this name, Yahushua, because Shua means to cry out for salvation, that it means that Yahuwah cries. And that Yahuwah doesn't cry, and Yahuwah is not a wimp, and he doesn't, you know, all these various things. They, they try to say these silly arguments. And a lot of these people have gone as far as to blaspheme the name of Yahushua because of this, just because of the variance of spelling. If you look up this word Shua, and it means to cry out for salvation, for liberation, for freedom, and all these various things, I want you to ask yourself, is Yahushua, Yahuwah's son, is the son of Yahuwah not a cry out for salvation? A halu, which means a crying out for salvation. Is he not deliverance? Is he not welfare? Is he not liberation? Is Yahushua not, is he not all these things? They try to point out a scripture that says he will not cry out. When you look up that word cry out in the book of Isaiah, you'll find out it's not even Shua. It's not even related to the same word. It's a completely different word. They point out all these different things. They try to make it out to be a bad thing. Another thing that I've heard mentioned is that Shua comes from the word Shin Wa Aleph, which is H7723. If you look up this word Shua, it appears in the book of Exodus chapter 20 where Yahuwah says, I will not leave the one guiltless who brings my name to nothing or vanity. That word is Shua, or the Strong's Concordance says it's pronounced Shaw, Shinwal Aleph. But the argument is it's related to the name of the word Shua, Shinwal Ayin. Okay, that's what they're saying. Now, if you have to go by that alone, I want to give you some words in English that sound the same, but don't mean the same. And we know when we look at the entomology of these two words, they're not related. Shinwal Aleph is not related to Shinwal Ay. But anyway, in English, for instance, if I say uh, I want to go over there, implying a direction, notice the word there opposed to if someone owns something, I will say it is theirs. Or if someone is doing something with someone else, I will say there, as in they are. The, the word for can mean I'm doing something for someone. It can also mean the number four. Uh, there are three variations of the word to. You can have too much of something. You can go to the store and you can buy two things from the store, a number. So just because words look the same, sound the same, does not mean that they are related uh, in, etym in etymology. And you'll also notice that these people who tell you this about the word Shua, a lot of them are very dishonest. They'll tell you that that, that word is Shinwa Ayin. If you look it up in the Tanakh, it's definitely Shinwa Aleph. It's a completely different word. And something else that these people fail to mention is Sha is a Hebrew word. It's spelled Shin Ayin Ayin, and it means to look upon, please, or fondle. Now, I'm not going to use that as, as part of why not to say Yahusha, because I am not going to be dishonest like these people are. But I want to point out that they're being very dishonest. They're not mentioning these things. And you're leaving out certain pieces and adding to certain pieces. And if Shua means vanity or nothingness, then we have some pretty big problems in Scripture. One is the name Abi Shua, which is spelled Aleph Beit Yad, Shin Wal Ayin. Notice the Shin Wal Ayin on the end. You look it up. It's the strongest accord is H50, and it means my father is welfare, my father is salvation, and all these things. And it's the son of Phinehas, the grandson of Aaron. Now, you know that Phinehas wouldn't have named his son Abi Shua if Abi means my father, and Shua means destruction or desolation or vanity or any of these things. So you you got to see that they can't be related. Why would Phinehas name his son that? I mean, it, it would be a curse on his, on himself. All right, it doesn't make any sense. 
And then if you look up the name Elishua, which is Aleph, Lamed, Yad, Shin, Wa, Ayin. Shin, Wa, Ayin is on the end. It's H474. This is a son of David, son of King Dawid. Now, I want you to notice that King Dawid, the scripture says, is a man after Yahuwah's own heart. He loved Yahuwah, his Elohim. All right? Now, if Eli Shua, Eli means my mighty one, and Shua means his welfare and salvation, that makes sense. Because we know that King David loved Yahuwah, and he would have named his son something that meant glory to his El, his mighty one, Yahuwah. All right? But if Shua means what these people say with their misinformation, that it means vanity and destruction and desolation, then King David, when he named his son Elishua, he was cursing Yahuwah. Now how in the world could he have a heart that was after Yahuwah if he was cursing Yahuwah that way? So you have to use proper uh, dividing of the scriptures and looking at these things completely. Something that I've noticed with this, this proposal of the Shah ending in Yahusha is they only count the 216 defective spellings in the Masoretic text. The two full spelling, they, they throw completely out. They say, ah, oh, you can't use that. But I want you people to see what, how we, who call the name Yahushua, count these. We count the two full spellings, Yad, Ha, Wa, Shin, Wa, Ayin. We count the 216 times this spell defectively because of the evidence that I provided about full and defective spelling and because of the point that every, all 216 times you find this name, you always find the same vowel point, the kibbutz, that gives you the Shua ending. But not only that, we count the 30 times that is shortened down to Yad Shin Wal Ayin, they say that that's Yeshua, that is still Yahushua. That is a reference to Yahushua. You see the Shin Wal Ayin. So we count all of these times, but we also count other, other there's very uh, many other resources. I mean, again, I said it appears in the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, also many times more than the Masoretic text. I'm not going to get into all that. But because I want to continue down the lines of why it should be Shua versus Sha, because this is this is the thing that has brought a lot of division. Again, I said many people are making some bold claims in these last days about the name of Yahushua. They don't even fear him. They don't even they don't even think twice before this garbage comes out of their mouth. Um, one thing that I want to look at is one of the claims that I found on a particular website is they said that they had a teaching called the son's name made simple and you look at it and they say the father is called Yahuwah Yasha in scripture just like he's called Yahuwah Rapha which means our healer and Yahuwah Shalom which means our peace so because he's called Yahuwah Yasha the name should be Yahusha however when you actually look at their claims if you look at the verses they provide most of the verses do not even have Shua I mean, uh, Yasha in the verse at all. You, uh, you actually find it's a completely different word. And then when you do find Yahuwah in this word Yasha, remember that it's a primitive root. Usually you find the combination Hushia Yahuwah. Um, so you see all these, you know, we see all these things like Hushia Yahuwah appears in Psalms 12 verse 1, but if you're only getting your understanding from a Strong's Concordance, you think Yasha appears there. But no, it's the variant of Yasha, Hushia, which has a Yad between the Shin and the Ayin. Okay? So we know that between the Shin and the Ayin, vowels usually appear. The change, or you know, whatever it has to change about the meaning, you know, of the primitive root. But I found this argument very interesting, so I looked up the passive participle form to see if it was ever combined with Yahuwah's name, because I could never find the actual primitive root spelled Yad Shin Ayin attached with Yahuwah's name uh, directly. Now, as I, as I said, this is not a bad word. Yasha means, is, it means salvation. But I did find the passive participle of Yasha, Yahshua attached with the name of Yahuwah a few times. One time that we see him connected is in Exodus 14.3. It says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, 
Stand still and see the salvation of Yahuwah, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you will not see them anymore forever. Now, when he says, stand still, you will see the salvation of Yahuwah, what actually appears in the original Masoretic text is Aleph Tal, which is a reference to Yahushua because in the book of Revelation he says he is the Aleph Tal. I know you've heard it said Alpha and Omega, but that's Greek. Yahushua spoke Hebrew. The first and last letter is Aleph and Tal. Yahuwah calls himself Aleph Tal in the Tanakh. So this is a reference to the Son and a reference to Yahuwah, Aleph Tal. It says Aleph Tal, Yeshuat, which is the plural form meaning salvations, and then Yahuwah. So Aleph Tal, Yeshuat, Yahuwah. We see that this is a picture of the Son, that this day they would see the salvation of Yahuwah. Uh, in Psalm 3, uh, Psalm 3, verse 8, it says, Yahshua unto Yahuwah, thy blessing upon thy people, Selah. And this, it says in the, in the Masoretic text, Le Yahuwah ha Yahshua. So it's saying, to Yahuwah, la Yahuwah, the salvation. So here we see the combination again. Psalm 116, 13, this is a beautiful verse. It says, I will take the cup of Yeshua and call upon the name of Yahuwah. This is a beautiful word play showing the connection of Yahuwah and Yeshua, which together is Yahushua. Uh, here's some verses from the Tanakh which are echoed in the New Testament. Isaiah 52, verse 7, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that pu publisheth Peace and bringeth good tidings of good that publisheth, and it's the word H3444, Yahshua, the, the passive participle form of Yasha. So it says, How beautiful are the feet of those who publisheth, who, uh, who bring good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bring good tidings of good, that publisheth Yeshua, that saith unto Zion, thy Elohim reigns. And we know the New Testament says how beautiful are the feet of, the good, of those who bring the good news of peace. And it quotes from this verse. So when Paul wrote this, he was using a word play, just as Yeshayahu or Isaiah did, and he was talking about the feet of those who publish and bring Yahshua of Yahushua. Okay? Isaiah 59 verse 17 is another example of this happening. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a an helmet of Yahshua, of salvation, upon his head. And he put on garments of vengeance and clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. Now we know Paul said to put on a helmet of salvation, which is he, he was saying put on a helmet of Yahshua, which was a prophetic picture of putting Yahushua as your head. And here's a, a list, a brief list of some more examples that you can look into on, in your own time. Um, so we have all these, these uh, connections with the passive participle Yahshua and Yahuwah. We see that it seems to verify Yahushua. We have all these proofs of Yahushua, but I want to give you some more. I want to show you in some Shemitic languages that Yahushua's name never has the Shah ending. 